Hello, I'm Sonia, and welcome to Red Cardinal Kitchen. The ingredients in these cookies that I'm about to make reminds me of watching my mother as she sifted the flour and spices together. I love to see that puff of flour from the flour sack she created that looked like clouds in the kitchen. And in the early morning, the fragrance of maple syrup simmering away on top of that cook stove. Oh, so this is what I think of when I see these ingredients for making my version of a spiced maple sugar cookie. So stick around and we'll be right back to bake these delicious cookies. Welcome back. Thank you for subscribing and clicking that bell. Now you will be the first to get my free recipes. And just a reminder, the recipe with ingredients and directions will be in the description below. Also, we have a merch store in the shopping section of our YouTube home page. There are t-shirts, hoodies, aprons, coffee cups, and more coming soon. So come check us out. All right, so let's do this. Today I'm going to be making for you some cookies. They are dark maple sugar cookies. So here I have some butter that's softened with lard. And the lard will make them even softer. So if you don't want a real soft cookie, use maybe shortening or just plain butter. All right, put it in my little red cardinal spoon holder. All right, just put it back in its spot. We're gonna add to that one half cup of packed dark brown sugar. We'll put that in there. And then I have some corn syrup, another half cup, or excuse me, this is a quarter cup, not quite full. So one half cup dark brown sugar and one quarter cup of light corn syrup. All right, let's see, we're gonna get this together so if you'd like to use a mixer, fine. Uh, I love doing things by hand and you'll see that a lot. I do use mixer now and then. Okay. Piggy tails <laughs> on my way. All right. So trying to whip some air into it. Pretty strong. Okay, so I got that pretty well combined. Into that we're going to add one whole egg. This is a medium egg. You can use medium or large. I'd be careful if you were making a cake. Cakes are, have to be more accurate than a cookie. Now I want to get my little glazy out of there. It's called a glazy. It's the part of the uh, egg that keeps the uh, yolk balanced in the middle of its shell. It's not the umbilical cord or anything like that. It just doesn't look good. It will bake up. You don't really have to remove them. But 
I do. <laughs> Especially if it were an eggnog, you would not want to get a part of that in your drink. All right, so now you can see it's pretty thin here. And that's all I need to do with my wire whip. Now we'll just go right into a wooden spoon. And I want to put in my, now this is vanilla, a teaspoon of vanilla. And it has, I did take off the top. Let's see if I could just pour it in. <laughs> and a half teaspoon of mapleine extract. They're both extracts, but you can use artificial. I used to for years. It just so happens that I have some today. Oh, that smells good already. Oh, that mapleine and that vanilla brings everything out. Oh, that's, oh goodness, it's time to eat them already. They haven't even come out of the oven yet. All right, so now I'm going to put in, uh, let's see. Before I add my flour, what I want to do is I'm going to put in some flax. This is two tablespoons of flax seed. <clears throat> I grind it myself. It's the brown one if you're interested. You can use dark seeds. But you must grind them, otherwise they go through you. You're not really getting the nutrition out of it. And I know I see a lot of breads with it on top, but that's fancy. But if you're really looking for a seed that's going to be nutritious and you want your body to get it, make sure you grind it. Otherwise it'll just go right through you. Because they're really sticky and they'll stick. <laughs> All right, now this is, and I'm going to add my whole wheat now. This is one quarter cup of whole wheat, and these are half cup measures. I use my little uh, containers that we get when we go out to dinner and, you know, the take home or fast food or anything. I like them. They, uh, if, if I don't use them, they won't be here, but if you're using things like that, now, of course, you know, you could have fancier. Uh, maybe one day I'll get fancy, but right now, I'm enjoying what I do, and the food is more important than what I put it in. All right, now I am going to mix I have baking powder, baking soda, cinnamon, allspice. Those are all the things, and a pinch of salt. And I might as well add my raisins so that they can, they won't get all stuck up in the batter by themselves. They can kind of disperse. And I have extra flour here just in case I need it. So when you create a recipe, you, you try to think of the things that you will need, but sometimes you end up finding out that you need more or less. So. Pretty much everything that I make, I have history from growing up, from my mother cooking. And of course, my sisters and brothers. I'll get to those. Okay, now this is gonna take some kneading here, but. Okay, it's going to require another egg. I can tell right off the bat. Let's see. I don't 
don't want to get the shell. Go anywhere near that shell. Yeah. And then I'll take off those little chalazies right now. And then we'll just drop it. Get that right in there. Okay, so I'm going to get this all mixed up and we'll be back when it's ready. All right, well we're back and I have my batter mixed in, my flour. I added an extra egg that you saw, so those are two medium eggs. Uh, and you could use just one large egg. Now if your batter gets stuck up on you like it did me. I could hardly turn it. It was getting stiff. So I put in one third cup of water because I was supposed to, and I'd forgotten, and it happens, to soak my raisins. And that would have been the moisture. That was the moisture that I was lacking. All right, so now we have that solved. We'll add some chocolate chips. Just a few. So, going to either put them in or on the outside of your cookie, but I'm going to make these into drop cookies. So, there we go. I'm going to turn on my uh, oven here, and it's set for six minutes. I think I'm going to turn it up to 350. Let's get that out of there. So let it heat up, and while it's heating up, we'll go ahead and put some cookies down. And you can use whatever you have to get them out. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to use my spoons. And ungreased cookie sheet. This is a nonstick. Let's see. I think I'll make it a little bigger. So if you have um, your baking sheet, if you want, use parchment paper. Also, you could take and get these real cold and then roll them out. And then press them down with a fork and flour. However you want to do it. It's a very tasty, light spiced, maple lean taste. Mm, very good. So I'm just making a few for you, and I can finish them up later. I usually will put them up into the freezer for a later date when I need a snack. Okay, so some are big, some are small, and I will be putting these into my Emerald Live oven, not emerald live, <laughs> it sounds like the show, my baking oven, french fry oven, <laughs> what do you call it, Chris? Air fryer. Air frying oven. I'm going to write that down and stick it to that <laughs> oven door. And when I put them in there after it goes off, it'll go beep, 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 beep. I will put them in there. These will go six minutes. And then when that's done, I will return and have them sitting right here and we'll have that taste test. All right, we'll be right back. All right, and we're back and it's time for the taste test. So we're gonna have a taste of these beautiful cookies. Let's see, I'll just dig in right here. They're nice and warm still. Let's see, I'm going to break into him. 
Let's see. Let's see. Oh, there's the bottoms. And I shook my sugar off. <laughs> and you can ice these would be good too. They kind of look like a pumpkin cookie. Let's see. Mm hmm. Very, very soft. Look at that. Soft. Crispy here. But you can see. Maple. Mm. Yep. Maple with that hint of chocolate, some raisins. The spice is not overpowering. Very delicate, soft, moist, crispy for the people who like those crispy edges. It's all up there for you. So I hope you make these and I hope you put a like on them. <laughs> well, thank you for subscribing and clicking that bell. So for every step of the way, this is Red Cardinal Kitchen saying, happy eating and God bless. Bye for now. See you on the next one.